One of the most common language problems after a stroke is non-fluent aphasia. Non-fluent aphasia is defined as the inability to produce fluent speech, and unfortunately non-fluent aphasia can be very difficult to treat. The individual with non-fluent aphasia does not produce fluent speech, and therefore the brain becomes unaccustomed to producing fluent speech. It doesn't achieve practice in speech, and it almost as if it became deconditioned in producing and in training and improving on speech. Therefore, there is a great need for therapies that can restore fluent speech. There are some current modalities of speech tra uh, treatment approaches that can restore fluent speech, and one promising one is called speech entrainment. Speech entrainment is a form of speech therapy in which the therapist will ask the individual with non-fluent aphasia to repeat speech in real time. For example, if I were the therapist, and there were somebody with non-fluent aphasia close to me, I would say, it's a sunny day outside, and I would ask the person to entrain. And it would look something like this. It, it, is, is, a, a, sunny, sunny, day, day, outside, outside. Speech entrainment has very good potential in terms of restoring fluency. It can, during the entrainment, um, session, restore fluency for many individuals, and in the future it could be used as a standardized form of treatment. Nonetheless, it's not very well known how speech entrainment works in terms of restoring therapy. The goal of the study was to identify the neuroanatomical foundations at a personalized level that enable somebody with non-fluent aphasia to have his or her speech entrained during a speech entrainment session. In this study, we evaluated data from 48 individuals who had suffered a left hemisphere stroke at least six months prior to the study. And every individual was assessed with regards to their ability to produce spontaneous speech during a picture description task from which words per second were measured. And also, every individual was evaluated during a speech entrainment session with regards to how well they could entrain. And that measure was also computed in words per second. This ratio gave a evaluation of the relationship between the benefit of speech entrainment over picture description. We also obtained anatomical MRIs from all the individuals who participated in the study with the goal of evaluating where the stroke lesion was. So for every individual, we evaluated the location of the stroke lesion with regards to the percentage of damage to specific brain regions that have been if, uh, associated with language production from the literature. Those are outlined in the supplementary table one, <coughs> excuse me, in the paper. So for example, if this, these, are these are regions in the brain associated with speech, we evaluated the percentage of damage associated with the stroke for each one of those regions. To evaluate how well neuroanatomical patterns of damage were associated with the ratio between speech entrainment and picture description, we use machine learning in the form of a feed for neural network in which the first layer was made by the percentage of damage to each one of those brain structures. So the percentage of damage to one region, to the other region, to the other region, and so far, and so forth. Every one of those nodes then provided input to an intermediary layer, which then provided input to a final classification layer. And the goal of the final classification layer was to evaluate whether there was a benefit of speech entrainment over picture description. We performed a grid search in which we varied the numbers of neurons in the intermediary layer, and also the threshold from which speech entrainment were better or less than picture description. Using this approach, we observe that by having three neurons in the intermediary layer and a threshold of 1.2, meaning a improvement in words per second of 20% in speech entrainment compared to picture description, yielded the highest classification accuracy. We observe, importantly, that the feature importance related to the classification accuracy was as follows. Lesions located mostly in supersylvian structures were associated with a lower ability to produce spontaneous speech. Nonetheless, the preservation of structures in supersylvian regions were associated with a 
higher ability of maintaining speech entrainment or benefiting from speech entrainment. Individuals with lesions on both suprasuvian and infrasuvian regions had lower speech entrainment but also lower spontaneous speech, whereas the preservation of the suprasuvian structures was associated with a higher benefit of speech entrainment. The results from this study suggest that there's an anatomical pattern of damage that is associated with a higher probability of speech entrainment to be successful during the entrainment session. Namely, that lesions in the suprasuvian structures are associated with worse spontaneous speech, but the preservation of infrasuvian structures is a marker for a higher probability of restored fluency during a speech entrainment session. These are conclusions that can be used for the understanding of the mechanisms associated with restoration of fluency during speech entrainment, and also information that can be used in the future for the translation of these findings if speech entrainment were to become a structured form of therapy.